Hello, I'm Alex from LearnBeachAllAboutFast.com and welcome to part one of the mini-series of the nearly mystical skill of beach volleyball hand setting. So the idea with this mini-series is to share some of the best ideas and, and learning strategies that I know of for learning the beach volleyball hand set. So basically, when I coach people in beach volleyball and hand setting specifically, I have sort of many ideas that I share with them and, and teach them. However, in this mini-series, what we're going to look at are the ones that seem to have give the most bang for the buck. The things that seem to take them from a level to, ne to the next level, the quickest and the fastest and the best. On top of that, I've never seen anyone, either player or coach, talk or teach about these ideas. So for me, they're sort of ideas that seem to work very well, but maybe people don't know about them. Uh, so for me, they're quite valuable actually. This means that if you're scanning YouTube for hand setting tips to try to understand your hand sets and, and get rid of those doubles and lifts and whatnot, I hope and think that one or more of these ideas will help you. There is, however, a catch. If you know me at all, if you've seen my YouTube channel or somehow know sort of my ideas, you might have understood that I believe that one of the biggest reasons people have trouble learning our sport is lack of either access or engagement with in-depth content. In-depth actual analysis, thinking about all the details, nuances, and learning about that kind of stuff. And the same goes for hand setting. Hand setting is also a very complex and nuanced skill and there's a lot of small details that one could think of and could do wrong. And it's enough that you do one thing wrong and most probably you're either doing double or a lift. So it's kind of a tricky situation. So basically that means that hopefully this mini series will help you and attack exactly the problems that you have because they will attack problems that most people have. However, if even after this mini series you would have trouble with your handset, that basically means that you're doing something else wrong than things I'm gonna talk about here. In that case, I will be making a more in-depth hand setting course that will go over all of the details and nuances and spend much more time on talking about those kind of things. So in case you now or someday in the future would be interested in that, information about that course is going to be in the description below. But for now, let's get started with the first idea in this hand setting mini series. So this video will be about distinct hand positioning before you catch the ball and also something that I call the hand sink which is bringing up your hands like this and then getting your hands out and the first one is sort of a, what I believe to be a, a requirement for a good hand setting. The second one is more of an optional thing that I believe helps with getting this distinct hand movement and helps with some other stuff too uh, that I'll talk about. But it's basically an easier way to learn to get to this requirement. But let's start with the requirement. So what I've noted and what you would note too uh, if you start noticing this is that there's rarely ever anyone that has good handsets without having sort of a distinct muscle memory movement in their hands before they catch the ball. So for some people that might look like almost like a snap, like and their hands are in the position. Um, other people have some sort of movements, but they always end up in the same distinct position and it's very ingrained in their muscle memory. So basically the test that you can run on yourself to see if this lesson is sort of applicable on you or not is to see if you do have that. Go out and do a few handsets and see if you have this positioning of your hands that you always go to. Or see if you're sort of sloppy. Maybe you're like kind of loose like all over the place, sometimes touching the ball like this, sometimes like that, sometimes like that. And if you have that, it's not gonna be easy to, to have a clean handset. Because if you have that sort of loosey sloppiness, well, it's not gonna be easy to 
to, <laughs> to not have a double contact. I would much rather have you have this sort of very like your hands just click into position and then the ball lands in your hands. So I guess that's step number one, action step number one, to go and look at yourself on your handset or record yourself on your handset and make note if you have this distinct hand movement or not. So if you have that, then that's great. And I actually tend to not always teach what I'm gonna teach you now uh, to the athletes that already have a distinct hand movement position. However, there's always different <laughs> levels of distinctiveness as well. So if I was you, I would still continue and uh, listen to the hand sync theory that I'm gonna teach you in a second. And if you would be one of those that don't yet have a distinct hand movement, well, that means that we're going to have to learn it somehow. And probably one way to learn it would just simply be to practice and do this over and over again and it would work and I think most people learn it that way. However, since this channel is called Learn Beach Volleyball Fast and not just Learn Beach Volleyball, I'm gonna propose the hand sync method instead and I'm gonna give you a few reasons why I believe in it. I'll also talk about some cons with it and sort of how to conquer those. Okay, so first, probably one of the biggest reasons to do the hand sync, uh, which actually, let's start with. I tend to teach the hand sync either with uh, fingers like this, and then, you, so you bring them up like this close to your body, and then you just spread out into the hand position. Or you can also do the, do the heart. <laughs> uh, so you bring your hands up in a heart and then is also very natural to get into the into the ball position but the thing here is that if we're going to have a distinct position that basically means that it has to be the same every time and same including this width of your hands uh, it's also going to be including like these sorts of movements but let's start with this sideway movement here so this width has to be the same every single time. So let me show a quick game to explain why the handsick method is good for the consistency of the width. Okay, so here's the court for the blindfolded accuracy walking game. And just for a record, I've never played this game and it's just an explanation for why the handsick method is good. But, so this game the point is to blind to walk blindfolded from a line to somewhere in between the volleyballs so there's two places to start the game which is this line here which takes one step to get in between the balls it's quite easy the second place to start is over here uh, which takes, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six steps to get in between the balls. So, if you were to compete with a friend in this game, and the objective was to try a hundred tries, and whoever out of hundred tries gets and lands in between the balls most of the time, wins. So, which line would you want to start at? I hope and believe that you think that it would be easier to start at this line because then you only have one variable. You only have one step that you can vary the length of. And once you learn this length here, it's quite easy to get 100 out of 100. And it would be much harder from there because there's six steps uh, that could be of varying lengths and that would statistically make the chances that you end up in between the balls smaller. Okay, so just as in our game, if we have a solid point closer to the end goal, it is easier to reliably get to the end goal. So what Hansing does is that it has a solid starting point, because this hand touches this hand and this hand touches that hand. And from here, we only need to make this small little movement outwards so that our fingers are roughly five centimeters or two inches from each other. If we start with our hands out somewhere here and try to get them to the position, well, it's still possible 
but it's just way harder. It's, it's not as easy to do as consistently. Another thing that the hand sync does is that it actually syncs your hands this way as well. Because you bring them up together, which means that the hands know where the other hand is, which means that it's quite hard to get your hands to separate and then be like this or like that. They actually, <laughs> the easiest for the hands is to end up perfectly synced, also this way, uh, all of this way. Whereas again, if you started out here somewhere and put them up, well, before you have this muscle memory of yours, your hands could end up in sort of different positions, which is not gonna be good for you. Another small benefit with the hand sync method is that it makes a movement that you see in most pros, but not in so many beginners, very natural. And this is the movement of never going down. So starting here, going upwards, getting yourself in position, and then hand setting. Um, many beginners have this sort of first upward movement, then down, and then out again. And this is just a lot of movements that you don't need, that are just unnecessary, that will cause lifts and, and take time and whatnot. So the hand sync is very natural with get here and then out. Only upward movement. So now, is there something bad with the hand sync? And there sort of is and isn't at the same time. And it is time. Some people say that it takes too much time to do the hand sync. And in reality, it sometimes does take too much time to do the hand sync, but sometimes it actually saves you time. And the times that it takes too much time to do the hand sync are sort of quite advanced hand sets. They're when the, the pass, the serve receive is very low and comes like straight at you and you just have to sh shut your, put your hands up super quick and hand set. And the point I'm trying to make here is that if we are learning to handset from the beginning, we're not going to be doing those advanced handsets at first. So we should learn on easier, on good serve receives, on good passes. That's where we should learn to handset first. And if we do have good time for the ball, then uh, the hand sync method actually saves us time and here's why because the hand sync is basically your hands communicating with each other without really you needing to communicate with your hands this means that you can be running and moving towards the ball and looking at the ball at the same time as your hands are doing the hand sync thing by themselves you don't have to think about the hand sync thing once it's automatic. So your, your hands are getting into the right position by themselves while you're doing other stuff. And then you're like, okay, now I'm here ready for the ball and my hands are already ready because they've done the work. If you're not doing this, you might have to, in the beginning, be looking for the ball, then look at your hands and then set. And this is where you actually lose time. So I hope that makes sense. The hand sync is basically multitasking that does work once it's automated, once you practice it enough so that it happens automatically. Uh, if you would watch me play today, you would see that most of the time when I'm hand setting, I'm doing the hand sync. Uh, but sometimes when there's quick passes, quick serve receivements, I do not do the hand sync when I quickly have to get my hands up. And I believe that I do have sort of this motor habit, this um, muscle memory of putting my hands up without the hand sync. But I know that it has become easier because I started with the hand sync. So once I had done this spread movement from here millions of times, well, I could make my hands go into the same position without the hand sync as well. So yep, that's about that, about today's video. Uh, in conclusion, I think to be able to be a good hand setter, you need a distinct hand position before you catch the ball. And I also believe that it's easier to learn and easier to learn consistently with the hand sync method. So go and try those out, go and experiment with it, 
play around with it and see how it feels and let me know in the comments below if there's something that you're wondering about this that I didn't talk about because there's a chance that I've forgotten about something. Cool. So I'll put some real life or sort of real life on the basketball court <laughs> examples of some handsets here afterwards so that you can see the hand sync in action. As always, if you like this video, if you found it valuable, or if you think that my Learn Beach Volleyball Fast project in general could be valuable for you, there's three things you can do. You can join my Facebook group to be able to have more in-depth discussions and meet like-minded people. You can like this video on YouTube for me because that would help me a lot. <laughs> and you can subscribe to the channel if you want more videos in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next part of this hand setting series. In that part, we're going to talk about ball release from your hands. So, see you there.